Hey everyone, welcome to Bag Boys Podcast number eight. Drew is very slowly getting allocated, but we're gonna get underway here. Today it's just me, Rob, and Drew. Shane couldn't make it. His store is doing inventory, so he had to work tonight. Big boy things. Yeah, we didn't know. want to wait for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or go live at like 10 30 p.m. Yeah. One of the two. I mean, we but, could. Nah, Midnight streams. That. Midnight streams. Got Ooh. hashtag work. It's not, it's not like Drew has anything to do in the morning. Do you? I mean, like, theoretically, I do. I graduate tomorrow, actually. Ooh. Did I tell wait, you what? Tomorrow's like, my, my, my convocation thing is tomorrow. Really? Yeah. Really? So, got to go get up nice and early for that. I'm hoping it's that good. you'll, like, make your hair at least somewhat nice for that. Probably. It's I'm a good thing you're not working for then. It's going to be, like, probably slicked back. I'm going to try and flatten the sides of it down, you know? I like it. But, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will see a picture at some point. But. So, Shane, who wasn't here, had one request. And that was that we do bank account update very early so that he can hear it when he's working. Okay. So let me think. Or I should probably should really prepare like an actual financial statement for this. Is this gonna make a noise if we keep touching it? Yes. Whatever. Okay, whatever. So I won't touch it. Um <laughs> so, <laughs> it just gets increasingly louder. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so bank account thing, it's like I wanna say like twenty something dollars. So okay, we're getting close it's positive. But, but uh this morning I actually picked up an odd job. So I made another 90-ish, so we'll be at 110. Did, be, wait, did you already get paid? No. Or, like, no. So they, I'm already hooked up to the pay system. So uh, that's why they said you can come back and just do this. Just because it was enough. easy. Yeah. So they'll pay me, and that should be enough for my car and my phone. And then after that, though, it's looking pretty, looking pretty grim in terms of a financial outlook here. <laughs> I'll be looking for a job pretty quickly. But, well... In the effort of trying to be nice and, you know, helpful, I am going to be giving you one of my Corsair mouses. Oh. <laughs> so that should help your financial situation. We have a very benevolent dictator here in uh, <laughs> Varsity Gaming. Hey, that's... man, that's one less expense for you. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. And maybe I can sell my other one. Ooh. You know what? Hey. What, if you just, what if you just offloaded me all your old technology for me to sell? And, make, and then I'd give you half or we could work out something. There. Gets yeah. it out of your apartment. Rob gets money. Yeah, maybe. I'll just I'll literally sell all your old shit for you. I'll that find I'll, I'll find buyers. And and he'll take 90%. Yeah. Whoa. 90 I was thinking <laughs> yeah. more 95, but I could I I can wiggle down to like 94. We're 95. willing to barter. I was yeah. I was going to say like 85. 85 with me but that's true. You're the money guy. Not worth Rob's yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> my but. my client declines. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, uh what we should do right off the bat, which I'm pretty sure you did not prepare. What? The Uh-oh. giveaway. Oh, oh, I had thought about it. There so, were, no, but there was one that I saw. Um, it was something. Okay, I don't. Want, I don't. I don't remember exactly what it was. I don't want. I don't want to say it out loud because it's going to sound stupid. It has to have the word "come" in it. And yeah, I remember said like, that shirt is very becoming on you. Yeah, that. that and one. if I were on you, I'd also be coming. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one you chose? Like that was the one that made me laugh the hardest. Hold on, can we can we go with my favorite or? Uh, yeah, wanna... let's choose all three favorites. I, I we'll remember what it was. <laughs> I remember, uh, hold on one sec, one sec. Stand by. Stand by. Entertain the men, Christian. I think uh, I th- that one's got to be one of my favorites. If you can see any other quick, funny ones right now. Okay, so there's a two hours ago edited that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> can, are, we, are we saying Last, it? Yeah, sure. We should go through some of them. Yeah, okay. go, go through some of them because I don't even have my phone on me. So. What do you call a row of pickup trucks covered in mozzarella? A cheesy pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> For a sec, I was like, where the fuck could that one be going, man? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Here's one. Sorry about the mustache. I used to have more facial hair, but it rubbed off. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up like, hey, baby, want to play Forza Horizon 4? I got it free on Xbox Game Pass. Chick. And then it's just like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Radio silence. <laughs> that could be him in a week. Yeah, literally. <laughs> want to play Forza Horizon 4? That's pretty funny. There's a few pickup lines here, but none of them have uh, like their like social, social media, yeah. so we can't contact. I them. know some of them. Uh, yeah. So I guess that narrows it down a bit. Then. Well, the, so the one that yeah you decided on was that sure is very becoming on you. If I were on you, I'd be coming too by yeah. Incinity. Yeah, that one was that like I was kind of reading through them and I was going off which ones that got a hearty chuckle out of me or not. I like this one. I, I think this one gets my vote. I can see vote. you cracking up already. <laughs> it says, "Given Rob's bank account, you're you're a luxury I can afford." <laughs> 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 that one is pretty good also mm-hmm. Drew, what's know. yours oh fuck i'm at one sec i'm still leaning towards the first one though if we're being honest oh this is the one that i like 
You know why they call me Rob? Because I'm a rob that ass girl. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one that was the same that one. Ass. That was like, I'm going to rob your heart. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe that's the one that I originally saw. It sounds... Know, robbing rob that ass. ass. <laughs> robbing an ass sounds kind of like... It kind of doesn't even sound sexual. It just sounds like kind of like sketchy. So this one also, I like. shout out to the dude watching from Hong Kong. <laughs> shout out dude from Hong Kong. That's lit. This this one I really like just because it was one that you could actually use on someone. And it was, they say Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. Well, apparently no one has ever been standing next to you. Yeah. Was, like, that ooh. one would actually work on a girl. It, f- it would, I don't know if it would work. Depends who, but. It would be flattering though. As the yeah. other ones are just more creepy. Flat, but what's the saying? Flattery is the something, something. I don't know. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's. Yeah. That's the way they I say feel, it. I feel we'll like, like I know where that. you're trying to go with yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. Flattery but. is the most sincere. F- no, something, something. <laughs> no, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. But that doesn't really re- uh, relate to what we're talking about. This one's about. just Titanic. Sorry, that was a terrible icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another good one that would maybe work. If I had a dollar for every time you crossed my mind, I'd only have a dollar because you never left it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Is there a social media for that one? Yeah, there is. <laughs> is that your winner <laughs> i'm just bewildered by that one man i'm utterly bewildered i think it was was mainly my delivery yeah and it slightly worked on you yeah your your uh, pronunciation it was the helped. twinkle in your eye when you said it to him <laughs> it's because i meant it if there was a dollar every time you're on my mind i don't have one dollar because you never left it dude that's like so cheesy it could work you know Okay, so is that your d- choice then? I don't know that one or like the come on the t-shirt, pretty funny too. <laughs> <laughs> just the two polar sides opposites. <laughs> One's like clever, and the other is just flip. like. Let's just do it that way between those two. That's just. It's use, like the Kanye just, West use one line. of his uh, business card no, things. Just use here. my siege oh. coin. Okay. Ooh, use oh, my siege okay. coin. Yeah, use my siege coin. One, <laughs> one in five, bro. <laughs> forged, forged. All right, in what's gold. what? Okay, so uh, the top, the sledge half or side is heads is heads so what one that one would be heads uh that's the come t-shirt one we'll say <laughs> and then this side is the tw- twinkle in your earth twinkle whatever the it thing. doesn't matter and, if anyway, it's not <laughs> so if it's not the sledge one it's not the one that would come on a t-shirt ready yeah i'm gonna flick it near the mic so i hear like the coin thing this one <laughs> oh, i flipped it twice <laughs> it's the same side anyways it's the non sledge Rob one? just fumbled yeah. the okay. coin as so he was trying to show us. It was I just dropped it again. <laughs> so, it's, so it's the one where it's the you've never left my mind. Yeah, that so one. So congrats to Nut. <laughs> Nut? <laughs> Nut. That's his name. Hopefully. Wait, seriously? His name's just Nut? Well, his Twitter is different, but his username on I feel like we need to go find him on Instagram. Yeah, make sure you can track this this person. Because it could just be like also one comment that i saw which i just pulled up again because i want to mention you guys were talking about how your moms would like wash out your mouth with soap right yeah uh shane shane and rob yeah oh, shane and rob. okay so someone in the comments said my mom would make me eat chili flakes eat chili flakes yeah. that's next level man. are they hispanic like not like just genuinely wondering <laughs> no that's let me fair. ask them right now like <laughs> i don't know if i ever had chili flakes in my home yeah that's what i was wondering you would but, know sort of no my mom hated spicy food oh uh, really yeah no way she she can't even eat like a bell pepper without her nose sweating i can't do spice at all man like the i was telling you guys yesterday the kfc spicy chicken stuff gets me sweating pretty fast white people yeah I, there was one time i ate something so spicy i forget what it was I want to say it was like an onion ring somewhere. That just reminds me of yesterday when we were playing Jackbox. And <clears throat> the question was just like, do you think you could eat a ghost pepper right now? And <laughs> the Drew's Drew answer was like, strongly agree. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, and then I was I, like, I got cocked on that one. I was like, Christian Spock got a, a ghost pepper somewhere in his like, apartment, just waiting for someone to take, take him up on that. That'd be hilarious. That we- guy's name on Twitter is just Virgin. Really? Yeah. Damn, he's for something like that he's got a few good uh, pickup lines eh the one you look or the one that won <laughs> yeah. you looked it up <laughs> well, when you're not version. out sleeping with girls you got a lot of time to come up with cheesy pickup lines <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> he's putting them into he's testing them out next year he's, he's got too much time on his hands quite literally but <coughs> excuse me anyways you're call of duty oh god so i'm gonna give him a knee-jerk reaction to Wait, call it or, first question yeah how did you buy call of duty yeah oh so you have twenty dollars to your name did you actually like take out a loan just to buy call of duty 
Okay, so remember the place that I worked at for like a few days? Yes. They gave me a paycheck. <laughs> and so you, the first thing you spend it on is Call of Duty? Oh, pretty much all of it, actually. <laughs> that, that's all you earned? <laughs> yeah, I earned 108 bucks. In Why products. would you spend that all on Call of Duty? <laughs> what am I going to do? Not buy COD this yes. year? Yes. <laughs> What do you mean? What else are you going to do? <laughs> Wait, get called a loser by the gaming community yeah, too? Yeah, jeez, bro. I got to uphold my uh, my place in society here. Wow, man. what a turn of events. I love <laughs> I'm it. I'm actually flabbergasted. This is the same guy who was complaining about having to take out of his savings account for Subway. But for Call <laughs> of Duty, he's like, it just makes sense. It's, it's just a no-brainer, really. <laughs> Literally. Like, I didn't even think twice about it, man. Oh, my God. I had, I, Did you get the like elite edition? No, I usually, I usually get like the middle tier one, but I had to get like the poor peasant version this year <laughs> it was still 88 bucks throwback to when games Plus tax yeah throwback no like with tax but still throwbacks throwback to when games only cost like Man, 50 bucks i remember buying pokemon emerald for literally like 30 dollars yeah i don't understand well, what happened nintendo games used to always be like 30 40 dollars brand new yeah and now they're just 100 no now they're 80 they're brand. 90 after tax like a switch yeah game? but the other games were 30 before tax as well like a switch is a game for switch. We're comparing is, the base price. You're just saying a well, switch still, game. Right? When you say and Nintendo, you mean a game on a well, switch. Well, I imagine actually DS game would probably still be cheaper. Oh no, I, I doubt it. What, what's your guesses for how a much Nintendo D do they still like make Nintendo three Nintendo, yeah Nintendo, seventy. They still make a three what's but what's the three DS look like again? Well I think now they moved on to like just uh two DS. It's like a flat one. Oh. Yeah, I think you're right. But whatever. I'll, I'll pull up Best Buy and we'll see like a brand new game. Might just Google it on your laptop desktop thing yeah. it's because it's too, too late now too lg idiot yeah i'm interested to see this actually wait who, what, but, so what's, what's your bets there? i say 70 right for a nintendo 3ds game yeah i don't think it's 70 i'm gonna say 50 you think it's 99. less i would say it's like probably around 50 i, I think it's 40 for, american for 49 anyone. or 59 is my guess okay i'm very slowly pulling it up mm. but yeah i just like Literally, it's ridiculous. Well, man. 3DS might be a little bit more expensive. I just, I, oh, this guy's this guy is he, going he, back he, on he, it. He's padding himself just in we'll, case we'll, he's We'll wrong. compare the, like, because there's 3DS and 2DS and normal. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, okay, Luigi's Mansion 3DS is pretty new, right? I No idea. Let's say it is. $40. Like $39.99? Pokemon Ultra Sun is brand new. That Like, that's a game that I don't even think is out yet. Or maybe it just came out. Fifty dollars, but you say fifty. Really? Are you saying forty nine ninety nine or like fifty something? Yeah, forty nine ninety nine. Okay. So why is the Switch one so much more expensive? Well, Switch is like a console, isn't it? Like a three yeah. DS is more of like a mobile platform, right? Yeah. Super Smash Bros is forty five. So like, did you see that one guy in your or in the comment section where he's just so happy that you nailed it on the head with the Arkham Knight? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, thank you so much. Yeah, my just dick munch of a boss wouldn't. He's like, just push it out anyway. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, that's the shitty part about the game industry overall is like, you really got to push for that holiday release. Otherwise, you just miss yeah. out. I don't know. Like, what games that have came out recently do you guys remember? Like, not in the holiday season that have done well. The last one you bought that was Fire Emblem did pretty well. I think. That was well, not okay. in November. It's not about not doing well. It's about not doing as well. I guess yeah, like fair point. But I'm saying, what was the last game that like blew everyone away that wasn't released in like the last quarter of the year? When was Red Dead released? Uh, I think that was like November of last year. I'm pretty sure it's been a full year. Since I want to say released. October last year, to be honest. But yeah, like that's because I remember Black Ops Four came out a, a week early because of Red Dead. I think oh, I, yeah. I find that pretty cool too. Games will literally like schedule around bigger releases. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild. Well, like, so any of the Elder Scrolls games or, like, Fallout games will come out in third quarter yeah. or fourth quarter. Q4, um, baby. Q4. The Elder Scrolls are some sweet games. Skyrim yeah. was my favorite game, I think, ever. Mm -hmm. I used to play Skyrim drinking games with my buddies in high school. I remember. You, I think I remember you, you telling me that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think I sucked with that. I remember uh, we were, like, what, grade 11 when Skyrim, Skyrim came out when came I was in grade You were 10, grade 10, yeah. 10, yeah. yeah. So we were grade 11, and... In grade 11, you're 16, 17. And my one friend was 16 and wanted to go pick up the game. And then he was pissed off because the Future Shop, this is Future Shop, was still alive back then. Yeah. Um, employee wouldn't give it to back him because he was day. underage. Yeah. He was like under 17. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, I, um, I, I already skipped school. Like, I'm going home and you're no, not letting me pick it up. And he's like, yeah. And like, so I'm going to get fired if I sell it to you. <laughs> Man. Punch how it works. That's so true, though. You see kids that are like 12 years old playing like, 14 oh, yeah. plus games and like 18a games it's like 
Back in the day, there was no way I could have done that yeah. unless my dad bought it for me. My parents well, that's still how it is now. Are you sure? Yeah, you can't buy you can't buy a game if you're underage. I feel like they've I laxed think, it I a feel bunch. Like a bit of lax. Well, well, you, can, well, you, you just buy, don't buy it online. online. Yeah. yeah, you buy everything online in the first or in now, anyways. But I agree with Drew though. When I was a kid, like my parents, they would like check what I was playing, and like yeah. Halo came with my Xbox, but yeah. I wasn't allowed to play it. Dude, same. Yeah. I got like the Halo Three Xbox. Yeah, same. Like, the I know. Special edition green Xbox oh, was ha- fucking sick. I have that one too. And, and my, then they're just like, yeah, you can't play Halo. I'm like, what? my dad what? was pissed because he bought that for me and it didn't come with Halo. We had to buy Halo separately. Really? Oh, really? Xbox. Yeah, dude. My game, mine came with Halo and like a, the, the assortment of like party games. I remember like staying up late trying to get a few Halo campaign missions in before my parents would be like, "Come downstairs. What are you doing up at this late plan?" My mom was like, "Is that the game?" And I'd be like. Maybe it's just go and turn it off and just go upstairs and didn't say anything. Like, Did you guys ever get the like parental locks put on your consoles? No, no, but my, my parents did that with TV channels. Man, <laughs> Christmas break, I got parental lock on my Xbox. Oh no, ah, uh, it was the worst. So, what does that do? I don't know. It literally like, um, it just turns it off. So, yeah, right? it's, so my dad would put it like you have two hours to play, and after two hours, it prompts you for a password. And if you don't put in the password, it just you can't play. So, like, if you're in the middle of a multiplayer match, it'll just disconnect yeah, you. Yeah. Ooh, it's terrible. It doesn't disconnect you right away. It, like, comes up with the password. But then oh. it's like you can't do anything else. Jeez. It's like your option is put in the password or stop playing. There was, like, a break-even point for me where my parents kind of stopped caring about, about how much I played as long as I was doing other shit, you know? Like, yeah, when I, I was, my like... My problem was I wasn't doing other shit. Yeah, that was me too. <laughs> me my, too. my parents would always be like, like, go aside. Like, do something. Stop playing so much Xbox, blah, blah. And they would, like, make it a mission to, like they get me off at a certain time or like yeah. limit it and then after a certain point like i started like my thing was around probably middle of high school when i got my first job and everything they kind of just got off my back about it and then i was like oh this is nice but then mom of, i'm playing with my friends right now yeah literally but then of course it's like i end up just destroying my sleep schedule in high school sitting up to like 3 a.m because that was that was like modern warfare 2 my mom would not let me stay up past like midnight well, like I've, she'd I've, be I've, yelling at me being like get the bed right now well like they, they told me they were like you're as long as you're in bed by this and i was like yeah but of course, it's like, you know what I mean? Well, did you have your Xbox in your room? It was my basement. It's still, all my stuff's oh. in my basement still. What's so. the latest you stayed up playing video games in high school? Mm, didn't go to bed. Yeah, when, probably when, when When Mass Effect 3 came out, I stayed up for probably almost two full days. To play, like, not playing it straight. What the fuck's wrong with no, you guys? I, well, like, Guild the Wars first, was not healthy for that. Yeah, the first night was like not a planned all-nighter. Like, I just was playing till about four. And then once I get to a certain point, my brain just starts to say, like, fuck it, I'm not going to bed anyway. Well, yeah, man, if you're yeah. up at four, you have to get up in two hours. It's like, yeah, what's the point I, going I, to bed I, now? I had morning, we had morning practice for football, too, Ooh. which is at 5.30 a.m. So I'm going there off no sleep and just feeling like shit. And then I ended up going home right after practice. So I called my mom and I was like, mom, I'm sick. Go <laughs> home and I slept for like two hours and just grinded, did the exact same thing. All over again. <laughs> I think the latest I've ever stayed up for a game was like PUBG came out at midnight and then we played for like three hours. A BR? You played a BR for that This, this is back when I used to play BRs, but uh-huh. I stayed up until like 3 a.m. I was like, fuck, I'm too tired. I'm going to uh, bed. Yeah, I feel that. I care too much about my sleep to Filthy stay up. fucking casual. Yeah. For context. Christian doesn't play BRs at all anymore, right? Yeah, no, they're so he boring. Them. Yeah. They're so repetitive. It's like Call of Duty. It's just the same shit over and over. I remember over when again. Apex came out, everyone in their entire world was hyped about it. And then there's Christian being like, it's a loot BR. I'm not playing it. It's all like, RNG. RNG, not loot. Yeah. Or it's the same thing. There's but, a lot of RNG. If you're good enough, the RNG doesn't matter as much. That's not true. It, it, I, I have seen people like shroud and his squad of people who die first because they just land and there's no loot and then people come up and kill them well it's like, I guess that's if, like if you like, like let's use apex for example because it's like probably we've all minus you have probably played a game have you played apex at all True. well you fucking know it yeah so it's like say you drop and you get like say shroud and his crew land here and they get nothing like they get level one armor and shit weapons and then the guy's first time ever playing the game lands across the street gets a like purple armor and like a sweet gun yeah, you have to be a pretty big idiot to not like, kill all those guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, it. I would say like Apex is probably the most important for loot. I would say because you actually pick up armor and stuff like that. Well, all the other ones you get armor as well. PUBG, like Fortnite, you don't. I don't think PUBG. Ar- yeah, what? Not in Fortnite. I don't think yes, you, you, have a, you have a shield. Don't That's a f- armor. Not in Fortnite. No, but it's like not it's not tiers of shields in Fortnite though. It's yes, just, it is. If you get the minis, you can only go up to fifty. If you get the bigger ones, okay, you can go yeah, up to hundred. I'm saying like like there's no damage reduction multiplier based on well, that's basically what it is. You have to get a more rare yeah, but in, shield in, in order a, to get like, up you know, higher. There's not there's two levels or three levels of shields in Apex. 
Like there's in Apex, level one, you can level have two, like a full three. shield, but your full shield has different tiers. Yeah, and Fortnite, it's like you either have a half shield or a full shield, but like, like the top level of shield in Apex, I'm not. I don't think it has like a damage reduction, like effect at all. But like, it's clearly different. Like it's purple too, as opposed to blue. And then Fortnite's just you have health and shields. Yeah. Anyways, Apex Anywho. is the most important in terms of loot, in my opinion, because you can get rolled over by good loot, or you can get good loot and do the rolling but fortnite the weapons are all kind of the same in my opinion and like snipers there's i think there's like six per, that spawn in per game something there's only like, six something like that there's maybe more than that by now i haven't played fortnite ever since they added the new season to it so see one perfect example i know this was only in the game for like a week before it got taken out yeah. but like how unskillful brs are is when fortnite added that hammer or whatever well, that that's sword. a mac thing too they had max and fortnite for like two weeks and then everyone realized that they were game breaking yeah like there's just so much shit that you can just kill anyone with yeah, without actually just, having to do that anything. shit kind of takes away the the like the whole point of a br is like you, everyone's roughly on the same playing field well that's why i liked PUBG is that for the most part everyone was kind of even yeah. like obviously there would be some people where they have like a full ghillie suit assault rifle sniper rifle everything yeah. and you're just you're dead as soon as you see them yeah but for the most part everyone was like on somewhat the same level yeah i, I actually i've only played two games of PUBG, but my only complaint is that it's very slow paced but that's also because i'm used to g games that are like respawn get after it respawn get after it well, i played PUBG mobile for a bit that was actually a lot of fun i've heard good things about it but he's i don't i haven't heard about it since after launch but i know at launch it was just all like most of your lobby would be bots but I, yeah, the first yeah. like 10 games you played or something were bots. I remember my buddy was like sending screenshots like, bro, I'm going fucking crazy in PUBG Mobile right now. And then I Googled it and it, there's like the top article I, you, I find is like, you're not good at PUBG Mo Mobile. You're playing against bots. Yeah. I thought, I, yeah, everyone, you just all think you're so good at PUBG. Yeah. And like, I ended up being actually decent at it, but. Yeah. Like it's I, at, a, at mobile poetry or the other Mo one? mobile i don't oh, even yeah. have it for pc i just remember seeing so many posts on uh twitter and stuff where people would be like yeah i'm just in the final zone and like there's five people and they all just killed themselves because <laughs> they would just all walk out into the <laughs> really? or Bots. whatever yeah i don't know I'm gonna, uh do you play blackout at all uh cod's most recent no oh. i've seen it played but i haven't played it myself i like it a lot because it's like it feels like cod but it's also a br so like you're it's for me like the way the I'm trying. Like, you, like, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. Like from from all the time you have in Siege, but in COD, you get used to like how certain guns kind of like move yeah. and like how like you like kind of like, how about range of motion you have with certain equipment and stuff. So it's cool carrying that over to a BR from like strictly multiplayer, because like every BR I've played in the past Fortnite and Apex has been like super kind of cartoony and like. Yeah. But it was nice to have like a, like a change of pace and like play COD but in a BR setting. So I, I like that's it a why lot. a lot of people really really like PUBG yeah. too. Oh yeah, I, I imagine because PUBG was first person too, doesn't it? Yeah, it was like it was like the Call of Duty ish realistic. Yeah, mm -hmm. not that Call of Duty is realistic, yeah. but do you guys remember when Fortnite first took off? Just a random question. Like, um, do you guys remember like what was your first kind of way of hearing about Fortnite before it be kind of engulfed the world? Definitely just Ninja. Yeah. So I was sponsored to make Fortnite videos before it was like popular. Yeah, and I remember playing. I was just like, you know, this is fun, but like nothing that i would really want to play on my own yeah. and this was before like building was the big thing yeah and uh i remember like being like okay this is not for me after i made the video i was just like i uninstalled it and then all of a sudden it blew up like a week later yeah because like there was this huge shift between like like i obviously everyone found out what it was at first and then all of a sudden it went from gun on gun to build battles you know it, it, they took yeah. they, they took away the the premise of trying to kill people and replaced it with like who can spa smash the shit out of their keyboard and build like 30 stories in the air and then to get into the gunfight. That's the reason I always hated it. I was yeah. always focused on the guns and then I never learned how to build and then Me I just too, get yeah. fucked by someone like building a bomb. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Which like, I fully understand. Happened? Like that's a whole skill in a different yeah. wheelhouse. Like kudos to you. But when I was watching, like sometimes I just have Peter, his stream open in the background. Yeah. He would always be playing Fortnite with his crew. And this was when they had, uh, where if you jumped off a high height, you could redeploy your parachute. Oh, yeah. And so it was like the final zone, which is super tiny, like in most BRs. And they made it to the point where if it's in the final zone, there's still people alive. The zone will start moving. 
And in that final zone, before it started moving, there was 35 people still alive. <laughs> because it was just one tall tower, and everyone was on a different level, but no one wanted to fight. Yeah. And as soon as the circle started moving, people would break the, break it and then just fucking fly for it. Yeah. That's I was what, like, how is this fun? Like, that's this what turned is... me off of Fortnite. was like, I played it for a bit, and like I, probably two summers ago when it first came out, I loved it. And then like there was this like shift towards building first, and I just kind of always kind of brushed it off. Like, oh... I don't really care. I don't really care for binding all these builds on my PC, on my keyboard, on my mm -hmm. mouse. I kind of just want to play it just to play it. And then I realize that every single time I get into a game, it's like I see someone and then like I next thing I know, they're like 100 feet above me shooting me with sniper rifles because they built so fast. Yeah, yeah. you it's have on, to. It's on me for not learning how to adapt and like b learn how to build also, but it's just also just like I'd rather play a BR that's like, you know, like more skill based in the, in the sense of you don't want to have to learn how to do yeah. that because it's just not what you find and fun. it's crazy man like you see like pros and stuff like that the amount of stuff they can like build they everything that gets added into fortnite they find a way to exploit you know what i mean it's yeah. like so fun new build mechanics like the the glider being redeployed you can like figure out how to exploit that all the new vehicles to try to add in all the new mechanics it's like you watch streamers and like they're using the stuff in the ways like developers even said we never intended it for it to be a build first game right it was like it was meant, meant to be shoot shoot yeah shoot. shoot and then you build your own cover you don't build the castles in the middle of a gunfight just to escape someone well what really like i don't want to say depresses because that sounds bad but i guess depresses <laughs> me about fortnite and the state it got into is like again want to be watching peter and his group they would literally be in the sandbox for like four or five hours straight and they would just practice building and they'd be like okay we're gonna do this combo and they just do that for like an hour straight i'm like wait actually not, it's like yeah, practice. That, like, that's not enjoyable for yeah. me no that's not enjoyable so like me I'm, I'm trying to equate that to something i've done in terms of like playing video games but i just haven't done anything like that well, you know, like, I, keep it I, I always end up playing a game to accomplish like I guess that all the power to them for wanting to get better at it. Well, yeah, keep in mind that they were trying to be competitive, like actually going into yeah. like pro or whatever. But The only thing that I've kind of done that's similar is in Guild Wars, they had like instances that you would speed run. So I'd go in by myself and do the role by myself, but like you'd still get drops and shit from it. So it wasn't yeah. like a complete waste of time. I guess so. And then you could also do runs fat, but like... I guess uh, it, all, it all comes down to what you view as a waste of time. To them, mm -hmm. they probably would say me playing... But I mean, Call Fortnite's also, it's like one game and then you're done. Yeah. Like you don't true. carry over anything from that game. All you do, all you carry over is your like, what season rank pretty much uh, and, your, and your overall level, but it doesn't really At get least, you anywhere. Like in, in MMOs, you're grinding yeah. to get cooler shit, to get cooler shit. Yeah. It's like and Destiny like, too. The faster you can do that thing to get the cooler shit, the more cooler shit you get. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're grinding for end game. Yeah. Yeah. But then this one, when you're listening in creative cranky 90s as the kids say is that uh, what they call it yeah Ugh. wait what so i little tangent i was on twitter yesterday and i saw like i think it was courage or someone i followed tweeted something about cranky 90s i was like what the heck i thought that i thought it meant they were drinking or something like that yeah and tried, 90 cows yeah who knows and i cranked it or crank i put it into google and it was it's like a phrase for just playing fortnite just cranking 90s why I, I i didn't i couldn't find out what the 90 part meant maybe I hate maybe fortnite child, hell? maybe child can tell us stand after, by but. i'm looking I hate they they ruin everything. Yeah. Well, this Fortnite culture kind of turned gaming away from the current course it was on. You know, like uh, before Fortnite, it was all like esports, and it's still like it was a like Call of Duty type esports. Yeah, like it was very serious and very like, kind of they were trying to make it very professionalized. And then Fortnite came along, and like, all the big players are like, 50, like fourteen to eighteen, right? Yeah, which is like and it's overall and it's cool for the gaming industry as well because the gaming industry is obviously segmented towards people who are like below twenty five, for mm -hmm. example. But, like, when you think of gaming now, you don't think of, like, Call of Duty. You think of, like, Ninja's blue hair and playing Fortnite. You know yeah. what I mean? So, it's kind of, like... It, it's ruined the outside perspective. Yeah. And it makes it seem like if you say, oh, I'm a Twitch streamer, they're like, oh, you floss on stream? Yeah. Well, it's like, oh, can you dab? Cranking or... 90s? Yeah. Like... I didn't want to go to Minecon. Actually, that's <laughs> unrelated, but... Um, I actually, Another side note, I actually wanted to kind of play Minecraft again. I saw oh, it. we've been playing it. We do a uh, one session a week normally on Wednesdays. I have it installed on my computer, or I have it bought but not installed. So. Should we get Rob into the world? It's been I a while know. since I played Fort or uh, Minecraft. Maybe in the next run, <laughs> I feel like having you consistently every single Wednesday at a specific time Might would be a not hard. be reliable. Yeah, I agree with that. What do you got about cranky nineties, Drew? So apparently, nineties is like a thing you do in Fortnite, but it hasn't really said what a 90 is if i had to guess um so when they're building towers what they'll do is like they'll do i think like 
so all four walls and oh. then the platform that goes like 45 degrees like a ramp yeah and then i think they turn 90 degrees and, and then they do another one and then another one and another it's one crazy. that's, that's 100 percent what it is and cranking 90s is just like doing a bunch of them yeah so that's how they build, build towers it's crazy quick. to think that like to the to the naked eye it looks like someone smashed the shit of their keyboard but like they know exactly what they're doing the whole time which is the most yeah. Part. Yeah. don't get me wrong like it's insanely impressive how fast and accurately they can do the it hand eye is nuts it's just like why yeah it's just like <laughs> well that kid who's richer than any of us will ever be booga or whatever yeah, yeah by winning one Fortnite tournament he won like 3.5 million dollars i wonder what he's up to now though i just his twitch stream only has about 100 ish viewers every time he's on oh really yeah well maybe it's also because it was like 2 a.m the first ones that he had had like 50 000. yeah but he was also streaming with tfu and with guys like yeah. that so like i'm not trying to take away from anything he's done i'm just saying like Fortnite's kind of like streaky like that you know well it's especially the tournaments and pro scene. it's fine to analyze it like we've been talking a lot about shroud which yeah. um you've heard right yeah oh, sure. yeah you messaged me yeah that he moved to mixer and everyone was saying like oh this will be different than ninja because in case you don't know ninja switched to mixer in august and when he was streaming Fortnite on twitch he'd get about 35 to 50 thousand viewers i would imagine it's dropped off a and then amount. on mixer now he streams Fortnite like every day and i think he, from what i've heard he gets anywhere between 15,000 to 20,000 so it's like okay. about 50 percent or more drop yeah and Damn so a lot of people are saying oh but shroud moving over is going to bring more people and everyone's going to actually follow him because they care more about his personality because like yeah for ninja people watch for Fortnite; they don't yeah. watch for him exactly and like get fucked in my personal like bubble of like media consumption ninja's pretty irrelevant but like Shroud going to Mixer, like the only that means the only people I'll watch Twitch for is like you, and like hey. yeah, or eh, like maybe. shameless plug, you and like maybe Doc and maybe like Nick Merckx and Courage. But like Who, Nick Merckx signed a like five year contract with Twitch to never leave. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, wait, a five year contract to never leave. Yes. Is that an oxymoron? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was gonna say for Shroud though is like so like what you said. You're yeah. not. You're probably not going to watch them anymore now because if you were like mixers, it's automatically installed on your on all Xboxes. So yeah. Like I know, every now and then when I'm like about to like eat or do something, like I don't want to be playing while I'm eating. So if I'll click on the mixer tile if it's right there. But besides that, like it's hard, like I, I don't think I've even logged on to the desktop site yet. Mm -hmm. Well, like for me, I I was a sub for twenty months for Shroud. Yeah. And like I'm not going to watch him anymore. I, well, I'm, the one good thing that they did is you can sub for free to Shroud on Mixer right now. Yeah, they offer like one free sub for everyone. And then that like what so a month of sh like a his, month of just a sub? his emotes and shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here's what I was going to ask. So as someone who's obviously been on Twitch for a while and all this paradigm shift to Mixer, how do you like, how does that make you feel about Twitch as a whole? Does it like you sad? Like, like, like obviously it's still doing well and it's still all the reason I have confidence in it. But like, does it make you kind of, cause like Ninja left for like political reasons, not so much the, what the what cat mean? thing, the whole, you didn't hear about that cat scandal? He didn't leave specifically, Not for, specifically that. for that. Was, that was he had that plan for like six months. Prior. I know, but still, Wait, when he what? did leave, he put, he put those two videos out right on Twitter, and one of them made a direct reference to that video about the woman throwing the cat over her head and her not getting banned. I'm sure, like, well, every streamer talks about that, but that was and there was absolutely no way that was no uh, that, that would not be the sole reason he left. He would probably left to get more money. I wouldn't even say that it was like in the top fifty reasons why he well, left. Still, like he still mentioned it in one of his Twitter videos when he just talked about leaving, so it had. To Pay at least a minute part to some extent. I would say that the main reason why most of them are leaving is for brand. You think? So yeah. Ninja, since he left Twitch, has streamed way less. He used to stream like every single day. I think it was like 12 to 6 and then he would take a dinner and then go like 8 to 2 a.m. That's so fucked. So like 12 hours a day or something. And I think ever since he left, he streams like maybe a few hours a day. Good on him for that. It's probably so, more sane. Well, so the reasoning behind it, uh, people are saying is when you move from Twitch to Mixer, especially for people like them, they have a, in a contract, you have to stream X amount of hours per month. Yeah. And like you have to do this, this and this. Makes sense. Like, it's like your timesheet at work. So for them, they're like, okay, I'm going to get realistically, they probably got anywhere between like 50 million to 100 million to switch over. Yeah. You think so? Probably. And yeah. then they're also locked into a five year contract with a specific <laughs> amount of hours at this stream. They're like, you basically get a huge lump sum of money. You stream less hours than normal and you just coast yeah like there was i 
I bounced this number off you. I saw clocks. I saw the number of ninety four million getting tossed around a lot. Ninjas talk on Twitter. Remember that? Yeah, no one knows for sure. Like it's yeah. absolute pure speculation. But I would argue easily over twenty million yeah. each. I would say anything over ten million or five million. Fuck. To switch. No, to five million would be way too little. You think? Okay. Well, so think think about this. Shroud had about thirty five thousand subs when he left. If he has a three, or if he has a seventy thirty split like I do, which he should, yeah, um, that means he makes on average about one hundred and fifty thousand per month just from Twitch, and that's just like around subs and bits and stuff. And he puts like five YouTube videos up a week, also. Yeah, and then so in a whole year, it's one point eight. Yeah, so like they're not gonna Rough. get, they're not gonna pay him five million to swap over. To talk about. Meanwhile, I've got twenty dollars <laughs> in my goddamn name. Damn which, man, that's so much fucking. So yeah. well, so you think about it. Games. You think about it. That's five years. At 1.8 million, that's what six million dollars, mm-hmm. and uh, Wait, what? It, or no, it's like almost ten. No, nine million dollars. Um, sixty-nine, nice. Nine million dollars in a five-year span, and he's gonna lose a shit ton when he moves. So they're probably gonna pay him like double or triple minimum. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they'll pay for like his like his new house and shit, right? Actually, but I mean, they much. essentially just are. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Well, they give him like thirty moving, million, take one of those. He already moved into like, from what we've heard, like a huge mansion. Yeah. So he's got a gold toilet. Actually, he's and an, an elevator. elevator in his house. Oh, I remember you telling me this. Yeah. I think yeah. But so overall, an elevator. It's so extra. Man, <laughs> what a world back to... we live in, where people are just making this much money off video games. Yeah. It's so like... going back to the original point, though, what I was gonna say is that. Um, because you guys asked if it makes me feel any weirder about Twitch. Yeah. I honestly think it's going to be better for Twitch because it's going to make them buckle down and they're actually going to take action against people that they should be taking action against. And they're also going to start giving us streamers better incentives to stay. Like, like 80-20, baby. So, yeah, like, so like, you're but, saying it's almost like a reality check for Twitch being like... Oh, 100%. Yeah, like, hey, you're too biggest probably right in north america at least shroud was is their biggest number one in the world um ninja would probably say like number 10 well that's why it's kind of interesting because it's like you think of youtube yeah and nobody can compete with youtube like there's no point of even trying yeah people have tried and they all fail yeah it's like they just have so much capital behind them it just it it's fucked yeah it's literally monopoly They've completely monopolized the, like video uploading and then so twitch thing. it has a legitimate com- like well, maybe okay. not complete contender but so, um, some stats to throw in. YouTube runs at a loss. They lose millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Well, 100%. Don't, don't, don't most businesses do that, though? Yeah. A lot of the tech ones. Yeah. A lot of the new website companies do, but it's because it's owned by Google, so they don't fucking care. Yeah. They, no, they just, Google's just like, no money at money. it. If, if you need money, we have... Al- what are they, what's their head company? Alphabet or something? They're yeah. worth like something $5 like that, trillion yeah. dollars or some shit. So, and then you have Twitch, which is now owned by Amazon. They don't fucking care if they lose money. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, Twitch got bought up by Amazon a few years ago for like $2 billion oh, or something. That's the whole Amazon Prime thing. That's like, yeah. yeah. That makes so much yeah. fucking sense. I, I had a feeling. I, <laughs> oh I, I kind of, I don't want to say I knew because it would be a lie, but I had a feeling that like if someone was to say like that, Amazon owns Twitch, it'd be like, it's oh, just that like, makes click, sense. Click, click, yeah, click, click. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and then okay, so Mixer is owned by Microsoft. Yeah, which is why they have so much money to throw. At I was streamers. just gonna say like, uh, yeah, just I, I, none of them care. I knew that they, I knew that Mixer is owned by Microsoft. But like at first, some of my friends who didn't know that there was like they were owned was like, how the fuck can this random little streaming platform afford to buy out Ninja and Shroud in the same mm-hmm. year? Yeah, this so, is like crazy. Well, it's, it's just screw a marketing campaign. We'll just give Shroud a hundred million dollars. What we're gonna spend anyway? I guess so. Yeah, he is your marketing campaign. Yeah, exactly. We have Shroud come. The issue watch is though, us. they're not actually helping grow the website. It's not. It's working. probably gonna. I've I, used Mixer more since Shroud got put on there. You've been using Mixer since Smite was on there. No, Shane has. Okay. I couldn't I, figure but, out how to actually connect it to my <laughs> high res, so <laughs> I just stopped. <laughs> Okay, well, so basic summary for what happened with Ninja. He yeah. moved over in August, and they reached, like, a new all-time high for hours watched. And then for the next two months, it went down, in, like, incredibly. Because the buzz were off of Ninja yeah. moving. And, and I then think they bought Shroud. Yeah. <laughs> I think in, like, uh, the end of, like, September or mid-October, it would drop by, like, half of what it was before. Mm-hmm. So I think the same thing's going to happen with Shroud. Like, I love Shroud, and I always wanted to watch him, but... I it, don't think it's going to work. I think it's a classic it's case. It's got to be like, different with Shroud. Like, because Shroud's variety, though. It's already died down. Like, so the first stream he did was the Call of Duty one, and he had about 80,000 viewers. 
And you know for a fact that if you were streaming Call of Duty right now on Twitch, you'd easily average like what? 30 to 45,000 yeah. viewers. Well, he gets like Apex streams are about 50k on average. Yeah. And then That's he was streaming on Mixer of. the second day after COD came out. Still some hype. He was averaging like 15,000, 14,000 yeah. viewers. Really? I think it's a classic And case that was after of, being uh, up for three hours. The first mover advantage or whatever. It's like Fortnite was the first big BR, right? Mm-hmm. And then they've, there's been a few here and there. Like everyone said Apex is the Fortnite killer. Apex had a good solid m- first month or so. And then where, they killed it. Where I competed with Fortnite, didn't beat it. Competed in, on like v- on, on Twitch and streams. Well, beat it and for a while. but Yeah, but, but ultimately Fortnite's just embedded into the culture of kids everywhere right well so like it'll it, eventually it's also it. there's difference because uh with apex they didn't update it for like three months after it came out yeah fortnite gets an update every week or so, two yeah, weeks that's that makes sense but i feel like another tangent off that i you, you hear those horror stories about working for epic right oh like, yeah it's the, awful 80 hour weeks or whatever the fuck it is yeah um damn not, maybe not 80 i don't know if that math adds up a lot of developers are like that so it's 16 hour days <laughs> yeah well, well okay, it's true so it's fucked up it's pretty common um in the developer like game field that during crunch time so like probably the week before call of duty came out yeah, those developers were working easily like 100 and you probably hours si- you probably sign up for that though. and they also don't get paid overtime oh okay that's kind of fucked up then so you're getting 100 hours a week no overtime and if you don't work it you're fired that's so like fun. that's how. Please the game tell is. me they offset that with like ten hour work weeks. <laughs> no, once the game comes that's out, fu- who, well, the, the, why would you? Why would you work there? The yeah. offset is that you don't work as hard during the rest of the year. It's just maintain ma- maintenance, probably, yeah. and like preparing for the next launch. But during crunch time, it is you cannot take vacation at all. Even if you schedule this like months in advance, you can't take vacation. They'll completely black it, or what's it called, just not let it happen, or blackout dates. Yeah, um, and then um, they better get paid fucking handsome well, anywhere dude, usually to... they don't get that much just leave don't work there that sounds there's no awful other, there's no other options trust me what man. do you mean there's no other the job options? market is hard to penetrate <laughs> the, the job market for video game developers is awful like there's, be there's a different type of developer it can't <laughs> be that different see this is how you can see drew's man, white you privilege build... <laughs> seeping in where he's just like just just go make more money <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, the only reason that they're able to do that is because people work there. People agree to it. Yeah, but if, if nobody agrees to it, they don't do it. And nobody does it. Okay, so what you're telling me is that <laughs> people are just going to say, okay, I'm going to just stop. It's literally just supply and demand. Yeah, but no one's going to do that because there's always going to be people who right now can't find a job who are willing to take any game developer job they can. Like, I, I can relate to both <laughs> sides of this equation, but... Like, I'm, I get why it works that way yeah. in reality, but, like... It's just, like, there's going to be people, like, for example, me. Let's say I let's say I know how to write code and how to develop games. The only place offering me a job right now is, like, I don't know, somewhere in town to work. Let's say they're making a game. They hired me for, like, a 6 months contract to help punch a game out by, like, next March or something. I would take it in a heartbeat. I don't care how much they worked me. Just because like, I know for a fact it's going to be the only job I'll get. There See, you go. But, like, that's the they, issue. So say they give you like 200K, that's $100 an hour at a regular nine to five, 40 yeah. hour work week, and you're working 100 hours, you're essentially just like what? Maybe pulling six figures, probably living in San Francisco. Yeah. It's like, like that's well, not. You do real. Like, so if we're talking actual <laughs> numbers, there's no way any of them are making 200K. It's even worse then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the average game developer uh, like 80 salary is like. That, that's I think a, it's under 80 That's in Canadian, that's too. That's fucking awful. As I'm, I looked at it because I was... That's less than 20 an hour. I was actually on Ubisoft's website trying to find a job I could that's apply to. That's not 20 to. an hour? It's 40 an hour with a normal work week. 20 an but hour equates to 60 if you're working 100 hours a week. Okay, I, I was about to say, I thought you meant like, that's 20 an hour for the entire year. <laughs> like, no, that's <laughs> not Christian just gave me a look of just like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what is this guy on? <laughs> um. No, but they definitely just look at it like, oh, it's forty an hour, but yeah. then they work. It. Yeah, the average game developer uh, salary is eighty thousand. Wow, and I guarantee you, they either live in like San Francisco or well, this is this is in Ontario. So like Ubisoft, that's even worse. So Ubisoft would pay you. That's 80. like what sixty US? Not even. Yeah. With but okay so you also have to remember it depends trying on to which feed families and kids it depends on which company you work for so call of duty or activision whatever all their companies are that one's the company that's most infamous for overworking their employees because yeah. there was actually a movement like two years ago that was like the wives of the developers being like you are taking away our that family was, that was treyarch the i think i think it was treyarch i could be spraying fake news but there was like a <laughs> 
a fucking backlash and they're making black ops 3 mm-hmm. because there was like a all the wives of the developers showed up at one of the offices saying like give our husbands back man good for them yeah literally That's abysmal yeah and then that's uh, just how it is but um the only like offset you have for it though is that once the game releases then usually most of them are like okay we can take like three weeks vacation or two weeks vacation just rotate stuff in to maintain it really yeah but still i don't know the gaming industry is like or the like the the development side of the gaming industry is like cutthroat as hell like mm-hmm. i like i read a lot of gaming magazines just that i find around my house read a lot of tweets and like so many tw- <laughs> so i'm ma- very cultured i read tweets <laughs> no like i have my trending i'm on set instagram to, a lot to <laughs> twitter i have it set to the gaming like, industry big people will tweet about it, and it's just looking for a job looking for a job i live in san fran and i worked on these games mm-hmm. and it's like these people that like have like our blue check mark game developers can't find jobs so like, i imagine being someone who just graduated like you're gonna take the first job anyone gives you even if you're making fucking See, i don't know so a mobile an- game another industry that's also really fucked for that is uh tv film and animation it is awful like probably even borderline worse than the game like corrupt type levels or what no like they expect you to work shit ton of hours oh, yeah, without yeah, yeah. overtime well, like and just, but being on production crews for like tv shows mm-hmm. they, like you're grinding to the fucking stone like, my cousin did that for a bit i know uh one big like youtube channel rooster teeth they have yeah. the anime called ruby and like there's been a lot if you go on glass glass door glass, glass door. door yeah that website has like a shit ton of reviews. She's never needed to use, never like, needed to wait, use wait, an glass appointment window? review website. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say glass floor. But, <laughs> um, if you go to that website and look glass up their floor. company, everyone in like the reviews is just saying how they had to do crunch for like months on end. Yeah, fuck that. Damn, bro. And it's, like if they left, it's just like, fuck you. And then also that company is a little different because since it's also a YouTube company, mm-hmm. um, they're like, oh, it's really awful because like you're working. And then if the on-air talent comes by, like you're expected to just make way for them. So even if you're trying to work on something that needs to be done that night, you're just supposed to move out of the way and let them film. Is that be really so annoying? Like, yeah. So it's like it's that's a, that's being... a little more extreme because of, of the culture there. But like yeah. animation's really fucked as well. That's so just so messed up, dude. Like, there's oh man, it blows my mind just to think that like, the gaming industry is basically based on just like exploiting people for the least amount of money to get the most out of them to sell something for money that you're, that you're not going to give the people who made the game. That's you're going to give it to industry. like the C-suite people <laughs> in economics 101. Well, yeah, it's, that applies to every single industry, but it's the most visible in gaming, I think. Nah, I'd say in other ones like retail jobs. Well, yeah, I'm saying like less. making T-shirts. I'm saying big picture like stuff that you can like easily discussed via modern day examples mm-hmm. yeah but and the worst is the people who support it like those who buy call of duty modern warfare dude call, <laughs> call of duty has just sunk its fucking claws into my skull or into my brain and just not let go over rob's gonna be like call 80. Came out. <laughs> it's like call of duty 2058 is yeah, here yeah literally i do i tried to convince myself that i'm not buying cod this year i sat, my, I sat myself down like, <laughs> and I man you got a paycheck i was like i can't afford it just not gonna work and i wasn't expecting <laughs> I sat myself down. i wasn't i wasn't expecting a paycheck from the place and then i no i got an email <laughs> saying like hey here's a paycheck here for you from like the day and a half you worked i imagine rob gets a paycheck uh it's meant to be yeah mm-hmm. literally i went and picked it up and looked at it and i was like you know what this is just enough to buy call of duty <laughs> <laughs> I went to the mall <laughs> it is the exact same amount of call of duty with tax yeah literally i went and cashed it and then i went and downloaded it right after i uh i could imagine rob like sitting down talking to a camera saying all this stuff like you're not gonna get call of duty like just let it <laughs> happen and then when he plays it back to himself he's like fuck, shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. like, oh, literally that's what i was thinking to myself like, i'm like this fucking pussy <laughs> I, was like, I was thinking to myself i'm like Man, even if even if I didn't get that check, I would have found a way to get it on the opening day. I don't know 100%. how. Hundred percent. I don't know how. You would have sucked some dude off. Like, like you would have gotten that. I'm not confirm or deny my methodologies, but all right. What? You just pointed that a me. question at you. <laughs> so I have asked you in the past, would you suck a dick for a million dollars? And you have consistently said no. Yes. I've, so yes, I agree to saying no. If this were the same situation, you cannot get called duty. You have absolutely no way. I don't care what you say. You're not. You're. It's impossible for you to find another method. But you would not be able to get Call of Duty this entire year. You'd have to wait till the next Call of Duty to come out. Would you suck a dick to get Call of Duty? Or would you suck dick for a million Call of Duties? <laughs> well, obviously, if you're going to suck one dick, you might as well get a million <laughs> Call of Duties. Who's next, boys? <laughs> but would you suck a dick just to get Call of Duty if you could not I, get it this I just year? Can't, I just can't. I can't do it. I wouldn't be really? able to okay, do it. Okay, I was wondering if you would have a limit, to be honest. Like, 
I try to wrestle with the idea in my head, no pun intended. But like, I just when it comes down to the, <laughs> how is that a pun? When it comes down to the, like, let the man speak. <laughs> just like the. I have to reach out and grab it and everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you can do a no-hander. No, man. You can take your teeth out, give a, him a gummer. I'm not a porn star. My favorite part about the conversation when we talked about sucking a dick for a million dollars was that he was like, I wouldn't be able to sit down at my dinner table next to my grandma with her knowing what I did to get a million dollars. I'm like, why the fuck are you telling... Why is the first thing you think of... Let me tell my grandma that I just sucked the dick. I just imagine Rob like <laughs> sitting down for Christmas dinner. His grandma turns to him, just like gives him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fuckers. Now you know how I made my money back back in the day <laughs> oh, oh you motherfuckers <laughs> you gross motherfuckers but no the answer remains no a still hard no. no what about a million call of duties well I'd just still no like but then you could sell them all i'm trying to that's think that's like 80 million dollars yeah i'm trying to think of and you get to play call of duty <laughs> i'm trying to think if there's anything out there that oh, would sorry. make me uh 79 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and twenty <laughs> you can play all a million of the call of duties and sell them used for 40 million <gasps> That's a valid I'll just, just play a new call each day. Put a new disc in. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. No, like... The, it's a lot of cash flow. The only thing that would, like, get me to do that is, like, keeping, like, a <laughs> family... Keeping someone alive. Like, like a family member. If someone... If I'm what walking... What friend? Scenario. Not. <laughs> not for... Okay, scenario. <laughs> okay, I don't want to use your dad because that's going to make it really weird. Yeah, just leave... <laughs> Okay, leave okay imagine we're family grandpa. no no imagine <laughs> imagine you and me are brothers okay okay and we're walking through the forest the and, forest and what i'm chronicles of narnia we're, we're going for a hike okay the, okay so we know it's a made-up story because christian's going for a hike <laughs> yeah but, christian yes. left the house <laughs> yeah. anyways we're going for a hike how about you're in the elevator going downstairs to play ping pong <laughs> no yeah. no the forest Kay. is essential in this situation <laughs> we're in the forest we're on a hike we're on a hike we're and brothers. i'm like okay i gotta both take blindfolded. a piss and then so i go to rock a piss and the then rock a piss. <laughs> and then a fucking viper rock a comes fucking out number. of the bushes and bites, your dick. And 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 bites to, on my dick and, and inject blood out to save your life yeah no you i'm leaving your ass in the fucking jungle wow to decompose and get eaten by a fucking jaguar so have you guys jaguar. seen that movie <laughs> have you guys seen that movie on netflix uh, I don't what? remember <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the movie called "You Have to Suck a Dick to no, no, Save no. Them." <laughs> There's a movie where like it's these these uh this group of teenagers that are going on a hike in the forest, and one of them gets their dick chopped off by accident. Like by he's accident. peeing, he cuts it off with a pocket knife or something. Just like oh yeah, going for my typical daily piss and just. Buddy <laughs> must not value his wiener very much to so, cut it off with a pocket knife. The whole accident. premise of the movie is they now need to get this guy back to a hospital with his penis on ice so that he can get his penis reattached what's this movie called i don't know and it was you watched actually, it it was actually kind of good i watched it twice oh <laughs> um it's the almost, second time he was just staring at the almost, penis the it's almost time. better trying to come up with a name for that movie than <laughs> at the one point it. they find this uh like ranger station and they're trying to use it to get um i don't know someone and a snake bites the penis <laughs> so then they make one of the friends like suck the venom out of the penis as and he's like guys guys look away i can't <laughs> What the fuck? You want to know what the name of the movie is? Or you know it? What? Erectile Dysfunction. Actually? <laughs> no. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm finding out the name of the movie. <coughs> that sounds like a very peculiar movie to watch. One of those movies that like scares you because it's just so fucked. Kind of like The Human Centipede. Never I've still that. never seen it. I've watched the first like half hour. You don't actually see the fir- like the actual... like, like the- You don't see the stuff that you think you would see. But it's just the mental. It's just like yeah. It's just your brain connecting the dots is enough to fuck with you. But um, you know what movie I want to see? And I've been talking to Annie about recently. Joker. Um, no, it's a Netflix movie. Oh. It was a, a indie film movie that was aired at Sundance Festival. You know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, and then um, they like Netflix just bought it out right because they're like this movie is amazing, so they wanted it for their platform. It's called I Am Mother. I Am Mother. The premise is, as far as I've been able to understand, is this a scary movie. No, it's mm-hmm. a like dystopian futuristic movie oh, where okay. it's a um like factory underground or whatever that makes babies and like so they basically just like pull out a jar and they're like okay we're gonna make this baby and they incubate it and then there's a, a robot called mother which takes care of all the babies and like raises them and then it gets to the point in the future where the people are like 
you're not our mom like you're not human or whatever and then they start like revolting and trying to break out and it's the whole story of them like getting out of the facility that sounds pretty interesting dude that actually. is fucking cool when yeah. is that coming out it's already on netflix it's called i am What's mother it called? i am yeah i am mother and so what it really reminded me of was uh What's it called? Portal 2. You guys played that? I haven't played. I've watched Portal 1, but haven't seen Portal 2 to any degree. But like, so it's kind of the same thing. Like the robots like guiding you and like trying and to. It ends up being bad, right? Yeah. And then yeah. like it's trying to take over. So then you. GLaDOS, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah. You fight it. GLaDOS. Um, but yeah, I really want to watch that movie because it sounds super interesting. That sounds so cool. It does mm-hmm. sound pretty cool. I just, I'm also, just, I, I find it so hard to just sit and watch a movie by myself and not get bored or really? distracted. Yeah, dude. I don't know what it is. I think I have. Well, I do have ADD to an extent, but like nothing super bad. Pop the like Maddie's. actually ADD, like or... to the point where like my teachers in elementary school were like, "Your kid has ADD," but I never ended up going and getting tested for it. Man, go, go get tested. Get some Addies. No, I would not no, trust dude, that I... because I got to, or so my sister did an online test and it was just like, "Oh, you're like oh, really it's online it's horseshit." She's like, "You're." It was like, "You're really ADD." I'm. She's like, you, "Like I'm ADD." I, mm-hmm. All this stuff. I was like, "Okay, I'll do it." And instead, I was like severely add to the point where you? i need like medical assistance yeah and i was like i'm not gonna trust this yeah adderall's scary too like oh yeah for i have sure. some I friends who took it throughout kidding. school and like <laughs> my mom friend said like if you don't have your schoolwork right in front of you like you're just, like you're just, like, my, he, he said he spent the entire day like cleaning his room yeah and like and, he's, and i was like there's no way like you're just making that up he's like no seriously man he's like i was having a panic attack because my room was like wasn't clean enough the entire day so I vacuumed it like twice. Like I just like, Jeez, that sounds awful. Yeah. It's like, it sounds like something like, I need. Well, like it's just like, mess. it's like it, everyone thinks that everyone correlates Adderall to school, but Adderall just kind of like, kind of like, I don't know exactly how it works, but it like turns off parts of your brain and like takes that. You're saying like, very task oriented. Yeah. And then, it, and it puts mm-hmm. everything towards like the frontal lobe or wherever the task processing part of your brain is and like supercharges it. The be- best way to yeah. describe it is basically you get tunnel vision yeah like it's the the, whatever vision. is in front of you you will focus on yeah. and that's it it's like having blinders like for a yeah. horse but i would never try it i, I, was, I was it's also trust pills as a whole it's also like kind of expensive to get tested because yeah. when my sister was looking into it, i think she said it was like 250 bucks just to do the test and even, even then in it's, canada yeah yeah it's not considered like a medical necessity it's more of like Interesting. a I'd say if you have it's, ADD, it's a nice to have if you have ADD, it's, like glasses, it's not considered it's not like a like, you know, if you have, I don't know, like really bad anxiety or something like that, it's considered like a mental, what do you call it, health like item, I guess, when you're, when you're applying to jobs, something like that. Or if you're being like, if you go to the doctor and they fill out a form saying like, do you have this, 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 ADD isn't on there as like an actual bad thing. It's just kind of, oh, you have it. You can do, you can treat it if you want, or you can just kind yeah. of go through life the way you have been. Because like while, level. while it's yeah. not, it won't make you like to the same level of like, for lack of a better word, like a normal person. Yeah. It's still completely like within reason that you can still live a normal life. Yeah, with it's ADD. like even if I did have it, I've made it this far. Like I, I find myself that like when I'm in class, I find myself so distracted the entire time. But like I could see you having it just from yesterday. From yesterday, when we were playing Jackbox, and the amount of times I said "Don't read the prompt." Oh yeah, like, yeah. Well, I just the kind of prompt f- is telling me this. I just kind of forget instructions. Um, but... Also, it's called the package. The package, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to come up with like a pun. Thing, with the deck I thought movie, of it. right? Yeah, the yeah. deck movie. So tonight we're gonna watch the package, and I am mother, and then Drew's just gonna go watch I am mother. Hundred yeah. percent. I should probably study for a bit after this. I'm gonna but... finish trying to finish Call of Duty campaign, which I never got around to. We had that junk discussion oh. about video games, but never got to caught. The one thing I want to throw in before you talk about COD campaign, yeah. if you're going to. Actually, maybe you shouldn't because it just came out. People don't want spoilers. Oh, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm okay. just going to talk about it if I but like the it. The one thing I want to throw in, apparently. <laughs> not even finished it yet. For a PC, you have to be online to play Call of yeah, Duty campaign, to. which is what? fucking bullshit. Yeah, that's stupid. Also, you can't play it until you do the day one patch, which is a 60 gig download. So the only... I, I agree. It sounds stupid. The only thing or only reason is that I can track your it campaign progress because there's unlockables that you get in multiplayer for competing in the campaign. So, yeah, if someone doesn't want I'm that. Not, they I'm shouldn't. Not, be I'm not. I'm not to. justifying that. It's not a stupid rule. You yeah. should. Like, you should be able to play campaign and co-op. That's dumb. offline. But I don't know. Activision's trying to find a way to fuck everyone over again. That is stupid. But on a flip side. The camp. So I'll, I'll quickly t- say the campaign, the multiplayer campaign is the best COD campaign. I'm not even done it yet. I think I'm about sixty five percent through. It's the best campaign I've played any Call of Duty. Rob feels like a Navy SEAL. Literally, I, like you, like the missions are, like the pacing of the game is so different than the usual Call of Duty. Usually, usual Call of Duties are like 
like the you kind of know what you get in the first mission is like your intro you're running through the barracks of something like learning how to do jump and do this then like, you get your first taste of like a big battle then there's like a few stealth missions here and there this game is like completely different because the pacing of it you start like the very first mission won't we'll get into any details of it is like well i can this is a, this is a spoiler the very first mission is a terrorist attack in like in downtown london it's very graphic and disturbing Oh, is it like the airport mission from... It's that, but like on steroids, man. Like you're seeing some crazy shit. Like I won't get into the details of it, but like I finished that mission and I was like, dude, I feel like shit, man. Like you're... I just just spent all my... I spent like the last 45 minutes like dealing with like injured people and innocent civilians, like terrorists and stuff like that. You get really immersed into it because like the... the, I don't know how to explain it. You just do. It's just... I I just want to do it throwback to last week i love yeah. how rob is like i feel so awful like the terrorist <laughs> attack on that but last week talking about homeless people is like fuck them yeah well i i'll make i'll prepare a statement on homeless people but shane has to be here for it okay um, <laughs> i've prepared a statement <laughs> yeah um and then it's just like so there's that and like you feel like just you feel like the grief you know what i mean from like it feels like you're actually there they do a good job of like the immersion of it and the very next mission it's like you're doing like do you ever play You've played any of COD campaigns before? Uh, COD 4. So you remember All Gillied Up? Yeah. So it's similar to that. And it's like a really, and it's completely different from what you just did. And then right after that, it throws you into some, my this, so this is my favorite mission of all any COD campaign I've ever done. I played it three times in a row just because I wanted to. I beat it once and I was like, that was so sick. I'll do it again. It's called Clean House. You literally just like, I won't try not to spoil that probably already have to a decent <laughs> amount, but like you're just like going through like a house, it's pitch black. Do you know that there's a t- there's a terrorist theater somewhere in the house, but it's a room full of people. It's an apartment complex okay. full of civilians, and you can't see anything. And it, and that mission is like on realism difficulty, so you can't one bullet kills you, and you can't kill any civilians or anything like that. And you go through this whole apartment complex trying to find these people, and it's just like pitch black night vision goggles. Or you're, you're a navy, you're you're like some SAS Air Force. Oh man, like the like the like atmosphere. You know what I mean? Just like yeah, the, yeah. The, mm. it just feels like you're actually fucking there. It reminds me of uh, it was so fun. The Dark Knight, or yeah, Dark Knight when yeah. they have that, uh, like the Joker takes all the medical people and puts them in the apartment, and they're like yeah, trying yeah. to go through and find out who's who. Literally, and it's, it's, there's that kind of like twist to it also. Like, a cer- like not at a certain point, you're not sure who's who uh-uh. because the game, like, so you're good thing we have no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like the game, this is the last thing I'll say. It's borderline spoiler. Half the game <laughs> is like you're fighting Middle Eastern antagonists, but ha- there's a certain faction of them that are on your team. Hmm. So, but they look the same to, you know what I mean? Like that when you're looking at them versus them, well, and it's just like, no, like they're both Middle, uh, Middle, East, Middle Eastern p- civilians, you know, they both kind of dress the same and you're not sure who's in your team and who's not. So it kind of plays into the suspense of everything. That just sounds like racism. <laughs> no, for real. Like, dude, the game itself does that. Am I wrong? Like, the game makes <laughs> a point. Like, the game makes a point of doing that. Like, so if I'm, I'm just relaying information from that the game. That just sounds racist. Yeah. It's just like, okay, you have two people. One's a terrorist, and it's just like they look identical. That sounds no, racist. Like, literally, like you're like at the start of that mission, you're you hear a guy say like, "We don't know who the bad guys are here." Okay. So, like, I guess like. I don't know. Blame Infinity Ward, man. So the one other thing I want to add in about yeah. COD that I heard um, some people were getting upset about. Apparently, there's a mission in the campaign and it uh, relates to the real life event called Highway of Death. Or Highway yeah, of I just Terror. did that mission. And in the Benghazi game, in the something. game, they say that the Russians did it yeah. and are trying to play it off like in history. The Russians were the bad guys, but it was actually the Americans who did it in real life. Infinity Ward's an American company. Yeah. Makes sense. But like doesn't that seem kind of fucked that it's, they're trying it's, to re- it's scummy that like they're, they're just... trying to rewrite history and be like oh america's the good guys well like to me personally like i should i should uh admittedly i don't know too much about american military history or military history as a whole so when i play the campaign most of it's new to me mm-hmm. so like they can kind of take it and run with it but that is almost plays right into your point of is that even morally correct because you know i feel like that's pretty fucked up to well, like completely fucked up i think it's also kind of fucked up that every single cod mission you're killing middle eastern people at some point you know what i mean yeah it just kind of reflects like western views on that you know i will I mean? say that's one thing that i really like about uh rainbow six siege is that they make it like a huge effort that you're never 
killing terrorists or killing yeah. like anything like that like there's terrorist hunt but they're all just like <laughs> i was wearing, gonna say well yeah. they're like they're all wearing masks like yeah, there's yeah. no race involved and when you're very playing multi script and when you're playing multiplayer like the lore of the multiplayer is that everyone's in a virtual simulation and that they're doing training yeah so oh, then, really? like that's why even though they're on the same ctu they're killing each other so that's why they do that that's what that's what harry has to say about it (laughs) no that's like in the books oh okay yeah before they got all bullshitty (laughs) lore and stuff yeah i just i thought that was i've I've talked about that before with some friends of mine too i have like middle eastern friends who are like man like this is fucked up every single cod campaign is like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like you're in the middle of the of iraq or something and it's just like here we go again which like the only fairness you can apply to that is that that is where like most that is war where stuff american is soldiers are being yeah deployed but so like there is some validity to it but it is pretty fucked up that like they're trying to change history they're trying to make it seem like america's the good guys and yeah all oh. that stuff but all in all the campaign's awesome i haven't finished it yet i'll, 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 <laughs> I'll talk about how fucked it is it's awesome like <laughs> love it. subject matter aside like just like the sheer like the like, atmosphere anxiety like the one know, pacing of it is great I one thing it. I'll say about COD that I've heard a lot is that the mechanics are really good. Yeah. The, and you can tell, too, just from, like, watching, like, watch Shroud a bit, and it looks like old COD. Like, all of the new shit with jetpacks, it always looked a bit off. Yeah, it's polished, I would See, say. See, I still, I, I watch people play it, I'm like, this is not Call of Duty. It's not it's the more, exact same, it's but it's gritty. definitely more similar than what it used well, to be. Well, the thing is, Call of Duty's been so, uh... Bastardized? No, I'm trying to think of, yeah. I guess so. It's been so, this, like, watered down by, like... Fast you best. think back to it, COD, COD three all the way through COD, uh, Black Ops two, they were all roughly the same game, just different, di- slightly different guns, slightly different mechanics, and then like, forget the first game that was really radical. I think it was Black Ops three came around with with jetpacks and everything, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is this?" Because like, I think that was Advanced Warfare. Yeah, or Advanced, Advanced Warfare. Warfare. That, or, that's the one. The only Call of Duty I bought in recent history is the fucking worst yeah, purchase. I in didn't my mind. Life. I I, I, think- I played a lot of it, but. Um, I stopped after Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3. Yeah. Like, Modern Warfare 3 was the last one I Modern bought. Modern Warfare 3 wasn't bad, but again, it was it had its issues. But uh, the thing with the jetpacks was, like, it alienated the fan base or, like, split them down the middle. I've always been impartial to them. I use them when I need to. And, like, the, you, you can get good at using them, and it plays to your advantage. But Like Fortnite building. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, not like, it sucks when I'm not, easy, like, I'm not jetpacked and someone's, like, and some weird ass peak that I didn't even know existed. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I think the thing about jetpacks too is like it was definitely very bold. I think so. Everyone considering was like, the franchise, yeah. and didn't they do like jetpacks for like three other Call of Duties? Yeah, after they, that? jetpacks became a thing. They, like they, they, the movement like standard. That's what I don't like. And then if you're like, gonna put jetpacks in a COD, like whatever. Yeah, but don't make it like a thing now. Yeah, Black Ops Four. I th- no, or was it? Infinite Warfare two years ago was last was the one that I got rid of jetpacks. That like game the... sucked. Infinite Warfare was awful. That was the first COD I've traded in. But um, would you just like a dick for Infinite Warfare? For it? No, that's the one I hate. <laughs> I have the perfect. <laughs> All right, we we should probably wrap up because I know you got to go. But okay, um, yeah, sounds good. I, I do have the ultimate question for you that uh, I don't know if you'll be able to answer because it's going to be conflicting, but. If it involves sucking a dick, then the answer is no. <laughs> Would you suck a dick? <laughs> if that meant... Or, okay, so, like, if you don't suck the dick, Call of Duty never gets made again. They never make a new one. It's completely abandoned. All the servers that are alive right now are dead. Oh, All old copies are dead. Play the old so, ones. like, Call of Duty is now just completely removed from the world unless you suck a dick. And the entire world knows this? Yes. <laughs> Do it's it. all resting on your shoulders. It's like the Black Mirror episode where the prime or the prime oh, the minister fuck the has pig? to like yeah, fuck the pig. That's fucked up. I haven't seen that one. You should watch Black. I, I've seen a few select ones, but answer the um, question, dude. See, the thing is, like, Call of Duty's a part of me, man. I know, and so is that dick going to be a part of you as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I can't do it. No, okay. no. I'm just like I'm trying to You'd switch back. I'm just to trying to wrap my head around like the. You know what I mean? The physicalities the of it. And See, I, just, I, I would suck a dick for a million. Would you, Drew? A million dollars can change your life. Yeah, but so can sucking a dick. 
<laughs> Who cares? It's it's moral weight that that falls. What that, do you mean moral weight? Single, I'm not gonna walk around and be like every oh my single God, dollar I a bill dick. that you carry is gonna be like shit. I got this money because I gave some dude top in the middle of nowhere. You think I'm gonna care? I'm gonna be like fucking spend the money. Give me a week to think about it. Okay, right. so we we'll revisit. I'm telling you now, anything that involves sucking a dick minus keeping my loved Stop ones alive is not happening. Well, I thought Call of Duty would be one of your loved ones, but apparently, well, not. that's like it's, I do like I do love Call of Duty <laughs> with my entire heart. But like, you wouldn't second to say Call that. of Duty has ended two of my relationships in some way or another. We'll set a story for next week. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure where to go with that. All right, we'll wrap up here. A little bit of a shorter one this week, but I uh, miss you, Shane. Shane will be back next XOXO. week. XOXO. And yeah. we'll find out if Drew really will suck that dick for a million dollars. I'll give you my number. Okay. Bye. 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 I, you, you wouldn't do it. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs>